Olympics in Seoul in 1988. Regarded now as the top Italian official. For Andy Roxburgh, having a chat there with Craig Brown, looking carefully at the Swiss formation early on to make sure they've prepared correctly, tactically. So it's McCoy to McCall who start the match. And it'll be fascinating to see the Scottish formation early on. And Stuart McKimmy has moved into central defence beside Dave Nick Fassin. Steve Nickel opening up at right back. Morris Malpass on the left. Gordon Judy wide on the right side of a four-man midfield with Gordon Strachan in the centre with Stuart McCall. Well, that's very interesting indeed. Tom Boyd, the fourth man in midfield, playing wide on the left. He may well be involved in stopping forward runs made by Mark Hottigar. The Swiss right back who loves to come charging forward. There's Forza getting his first touch. Playing the ball wide. Challenge made there by Malpass. So the Swiss finding Heinz Hermann straight away. Looking for Orel on the left flank. Headed on finds Christian Naz. He's pulled across by McPherson. That's a good play by Turkey on the eyes. The cross is too long for the Swiss players racing in there. Adrian Kenup was a major threat in the air, the number seven for Switzerland. The Swiss enjoying some early possession, forcing Mo Johnston to come back and help in defence. Free kick has been given for that challenge by Tom Boyd. With Rodney Strachan coming back to ensure that the organisation at the back is correct. Stilica standing down below us in the technical area. The dugouts are now called. So some early defensive work for the Scots. Played short by Suta. This Forza. Cross to the far side. The Scots have all funneled back except Johnston. The clearance there came from Steve Nicholl. Underneath the ball was Malpass. Taking no chances. There's Hotigat. He'll have to be watched coming forward for... Switzerland there's Hermann this is Dominic Herr it's a very young Swiss side average age less than 25 Alan Suta one of the younger players Boris Malpass going across to make a challenge there but Strachan recovers a little bit casual in possession Strachan he's rescued though by Malpass there's McCoist trying to link up with Johnston. And McCoist and Johnston, I can tell you, full of enthusiasm for this action. Both desperate to play. Johnston, in fact, asking to be excused from some practice game this morning in case there's any possibility of taking a knock and not being able to take his place tonight. It's his first match for Scotland since the World Cup match against Brazil in Turin. Here's Alain Suta, who's come back. Very talented on his left side. Balls is in trouble. There's McCoy with Jury. The opening is on for Scotland. Here's Jury waiting there for Johnston. Then attempting to drive the ball towards goal. Dominique Herr was in the way. That's good play from Switzerland. There's Suta, tackled firmly by Jury, but the free kick was given for the challenge initially by Stuart McCall, I think. Rather than the second challenge from Jury. Well, there are instructions already coming from the Scottish dugout towards Gordon Jury to pass on to his teammates. There's Knup, number seven, dropping back. There's Herr. Scots prepare to allow the Swiss to have possession in their back four. He's off Orel across to Dominic Herr. And here's Hermann. Forza once again, only one international before tonight. That was a friendly against Czechoslovakia last month. And McPherson going in behind Chaplizat. Continue the free kick for Switzerland. The whistling from the Swiss supporters. Greeting that challenge from McPherson. And now it's Uli Stilica who is shouting instructions towards Hermann. Number 10 there is Alan Suta from Grasshopper Zurich. Cross it goes to Kinnup. Testing Andy Gorham. Well, that's just the kind of save the Scottish players would want from Gorham. Looking so calm and assured. Winning his 16th cap tonight. 
four shutouts so far in his 15 internationals. Herman getting up well against McCall. McKimmy getting up well. Playing beside Dave McPherson. The role he plays alongside Brian Irvin with for Aberdeen. Of course it goes to Boyd. Look at the pace now of Boyd. Surprising in Swiss defence and earning in the first corner kick of the match for Scotland. One of the reasons why Boyd is in the side is that powerful running on the flank. Both going forward and indeed going back. Well, it's dusty work for the Scotland coach. Tom McPherson has gone forward. Tom Boyd is also there. Gordon Judy could be dangerous here too. He's a near post target. Easily mopped up by Hottiger for Switzerland. McPherson makes his way back to a defensive position and Paul looks for McCoist, holding off Hare. Strong play there by McCoist. The ball was carried out though for a throw to Switzerland. And right enough space, just loosen to the bedlam inside the stadium. Picture of the Swiss crowd when it's big enough, the noise they make. Stefan Huber, the Lausanne sports goalkeeper, 25 years old, is 8th international. Steve Nichol calling to McPherson to leave that. Another forward by Orel. Fine tackle from McCall, robbed then by Suter. And back by Knup to Borza. This is Hottiger. Boyd goes across to face him. Chapuisat holding off McPherson and fairly very alert referee from Julio Lanesi. Oh, here's Judy. Look at Judy's pace in the flank now. That's recognized by Suter, who was determined to get in an early tackle. You have heard all about Judy's pace. The referee's given a foul throw there against Steve Nichol. Now playing a very important early role. Lanesi, the referee. Christophe Morel, 23-year-old, taking the throw, it's only his fifth international. It's very young international side this, here's Herman finding space though, and then robbed well by McCall. Now fast reacting to a call there from Andy Gorham. Andy Rochefort down below is waving the Scottish players forward, particularly Gordon Jury. Jury's underneath this. So was Boyd. Striking trying to get to the ball, but penalised for lifting his foot too high. There was an angry action there from Suter. The referee going to the flashpoint there in case there was to be any developing feud, which there wasn't. But the ball was played across there. Came off the head of Hermann as he challenged Boyd. This is Suter. Now Forza. Finding Turkilmaz on the run, that's great play from Switzerland, but it's gone through to Gorham. Turkilmaz appeared to lose his bearings there for a split second. That long pass looked as though it may well have gone through the Scottish defence. Here's Strachan. Well tackled by Herman. Boyd picks it up for McCall. And this is Malpass. Strachan has clearly been given a roving commission across the middle of the field for Scotland. At the turn pass attempted by McCoyst. Here's Nicol. And now Jury. Forced inside there by Suter's positioning. And he really didn't have quite enough space to use his face there. Very lush surface, but there was heavy rainfall before the match, although it is still very warm out there. No wind to speak of. Knut running up from McKinney. Here's Chuck Pizat. Turkilmaz has gone ahead. He's gone offside. Chuck Pizat trying to go all the way himself. Stopped firmly there by Malpass. The Swiss wanted a free kick, the referee had none of it. A well-timed tackle by Malpass. Jury being climbed all over there by Tukilnaz. Gordon Jury doing a fine job though for Scotland, getting back very quickly to help in defence wide on the right side of midfield for Scotland. The free kick taken short by McPherson to Nicol. 
Played up the line for McCoy. He's in behind his man. He was held by Forza. The referee has not given the free kick. It was a clear foul on McCoy by Forza. The linesman's flag stays down as McCoy looks towards him. Well, McCoy certainly slipped as the ball came through, but he was in behind the young defender. Well, there's no break there for Scotland. Ten minutes for this European Championship qualifier gone. Still no scoring. The Scots trying to settle after the very good opening burst from the Swiss. As Herman going very deep. 33 years old. Using Dominic Herr. Suter calls for the ball. And back it goes via Dominic Herr to Forza. There once again, Ottiger is on the right. Trying to get that beyond Al Pass for Turkilmaz. We're in by Ottiger, there's the chance on, the outside flag was up, it will not count. The Swiss go wild, but the flag was up as the cross was delivered. Brilliantly finished nevertheless. By the whistling around the stadium tells you exactly what the Swiss supporters think of all that. The ball player Chapuzat, number 11, is clearly offside as the ball was delivered. It wasn't Kudup, it was Chapuzat who finished that. It was the player offside, the flag aloft before the ball hit the net. So there could be no argument about that on the replay. Boy with a throw. Switching play across the near side with Orel. Trying the long ball forward. McPherson's pace being tested by Turkilmaz. Turkilmaz plays his football in Italy for Bologna. In his second season there. Turned behind by Nicol for the corner kick. The Scots will now pull everyone back to defend including Johnston and McCoist uh, Sutar will take this favour his left foot which would suggest an outswinger a packed penalty box every Scottish player inside the 18 yard area played across by Sutar appeared to be a foul on Gordon Tewey the referee saw nothing wrong with that as the shot was fired over the top by Hodiger. Well, a lot of bumping and boring inside the area. Andy Roxburgh on his feet. He's clearly concerned about it all. Calling now the jury to pass on further instructions. But Andy Gorham looks calm enough. He's only lost 13 goals in his 15 internationals to date. Only two countries have scored twice against him. Italy and Brazil. 12-1 by Forza. And uh, McKimmy appeared to think the whistle had gone there. He appeared to stop playing. Chapuis had almost made him suffer. Another player who plays abroad. He plays for Borussia Dortmund. Johnston getting up well. There's McCoist. And the foul is given against Johnston. Now Andy Roxburgh going for the tried and trusted pairing of McCoist and Johnston up front. Well, despite McCoy's lack of match practice an hour against Hearts a week ago and the full match against Falkirk on Saturday first full match for Rangers this season it's such an enthusiast clearly it's felt that he can contribute in a match like this played forward by Heldman the interception was by Malpass brought down from behind by Kinnup So the free kick being taken in leisurely fashion by Morris Malpass. Jury is calling for the long ball to the far side. This is Johnston. That's brilliantly played down for Strachan. And a hefty late tackle there by Herman on Strachan. Bringing Andy Roxbury and Craig Brown to their feet below us. And the result is the first yellow card of the match for the Swiss captain. Well, Gordon Strachan has been through that many times in his very lengthy international career. Fit enough to take the free kick. 
across the far side it goes played in there by Boyd there's Chapri's at for the clearance forced forward by Hudiger but plenty of time there for Scottish defence to group 15 minutes of the match gone still no scoring Jury's header that's good positioning by Johnston Jury on the touchline Forza holding off Johnston unfairly says the linesman no the free kick goes against Johnston Nostirica showing the tension of the occasion Steve Nickel playing it right back tonight for Scotland who are operating a 4-4-2 formation Nickel, McPherson, McKimmy and Malpass across the back in the middle, Jury on the right, Strachan and McCaw in the middle Boyd on the left with Johnston and McCoy stop front there's McPherson he's been penalised for a bit of wrestling there with Turkey Elmaz well, the Scots can't afford to keep giving away free kicks around this penalty box Chapri's up. Only 22 years old, but made a very big impact on the Bundesliga so far in his short career with Borussia Dortmund. And a very good header by Hermann, but he was under pressure all the way. The Stuart McCall, who made certain he didn't have a free header. Hermann coming in very swiftly indeed, getting up well to that. Strachan now doing some organising on the field for Scotland. Here's this free kick whipped in by Chapuzat. Watch Herman come for this. Getting up well. Challenged all the way though by McCall. Now Pinnock. That's held none. Showing too much of that to Boyd, but the throw goes to Switzerland. John Boyd playing his fifth international. It's almost the first anniversary of precisely of his debut against Romania. Andy Roxburgh clearly concerned about one or two things on the field. There's Orel being invited by Forza to play it back to goalkeeper Hubert. Here's Forza. Last season he played in the midfield for the under-21 side. Up playing it forward, and there's no offside as Nickel heads it casually towards Chapuisat. He won't be happy with that. Oh, fine play by Hermann. On the left is Orel. Chance now for Switzerland with Kukkilnaz. The ball deflected towards Gorham. Well, a bit of genius there in midfield from Heinz Hermann. The kind of play which has made him football of the year in Switzerland on two occasions. This was Turkil Maz on his favoured side now the left as he tries to go outside and make space for a shot. And as this is played in, Stuart McKimmy half blocked the ball. Here's Johnston now breaking for Scotland with Boyd on the left. Johnston getting up there with his marker Orel picked up by Suter. Oh, fine play by Suter getting away from Johnston and Jury rather easily from the Scottish point of view. Very ambitious pass towards Turkil Maz, that by Suter on this wet surface, trying to control a chipped pass. Strachan switching the play to Malpass. Here's McCoy, turning away from her, appeared to be fouled. The referee has given the free kick. This whistle couldn't be heard in the bedlam inside the Vankdor Stadium. Scotland's fourth visit here. They've lost on the three previous occasions. That's why the match has been played here. Only scored one goal to back in 1948. 2-1 defeat. Then a 1-0 defeat and a 2-0 defeat as recently as nine years ago. Headed away by Forza. Got into the penalty box by McCall. There's Nickel getting up well. And the Scottish players trying to remain on side. Johnston keeping a look along the line there. I think was concerned about the possibility of that offside decision dot being given. There's 
Schuba. Dyson doing well in the air. Some interchanging in the front players of Switzerland. You know, Chefrizat and Tuchelmaz. And giving the freedom to move around up front. Here's Orel. Chefrizat. And the position goes Switzerland's way. Much the annoyance of Steve Nicholl. In fact, it's a free kick for the challenge made by Nicol. It did appear to be a throw to Scotland, if that was the decision. But clearly, definitely not happy with Nicol's challenge. Another difficult set piece for the Scots to face. Well, Chef Rizat, cooking the ball across the far post. Her waits for it. And McPherson took no chances at all, turning that away. Dominic Kerr stays in the box now for the corner kick. So troubled times here for Scotland. Sutter with an inswinger this time. He'll work this in towards Gorham. Gordon Jury there cutting it off. A bit of bumping and pushing going on there, but McCoy's left to lash the ball forward and chase it himself. He seems to make the picture now. There's McPherson. Well, a snap effort there from Heldman could have caused problems for Gorham had he advanced too far. Jury getting up well. Bottle turns it back to Cuba. Well, the problem for Scotland just now is the fact that they can't get Strachan into the play in the middle of the field. They want him to create in the same area as Heinz Hermann for Switzerland. And so far, it's the Swiss captain who's caught the eye. Here's Orel. Good leap by McKimmy. Jury's flick on. Collected well by Johnston. Inviting Jury to use his pace. The referee, I'm sure, will give a free kick against Gordon Jury, although he was being held off by Forza. Jury explaining he was trying to play the ball before it went out for a throw. So Gordon Jury and Tom Boy, the wide players in the Scottish midfield four, playing exactly the same roles as they did in Bulgaria in that one old draw last season. And they worked so hard up and down the lines. There's McKimmy. Or else head up. Oh, here's Strachan. That's for McCoy. He's onside. Is a chance for Scotland. There goes McCoy. Forced wide by Hodiger. Still in possession though, looking for a supporting player, aim for Malpass, and Malpass is penalised. So that break midway inside the first half, Stilica clearly concerned, he's removed his jacket, but McCoy's had a great chance there, and you wonder in fact if he had been just up to normal sharpness, if he might have got a shot on target there. Well that didn't appear to be a foul by Malpass, the referee thought so though, and there's no offside here as Turkelmaz breaks. Sending the ball across, too long for Knup, but waited in the middle, it's retrieved by Marcel Heldman. Still a problem for Scotland. Here's Herman, setting it up for Suter. Off the underside of the bar, there's Knup. Challenged well by Gorham, and the Scots have survived. The goal kick has been given, but Alain Suter coming with an inch, he's a putting Switzerland ahead with this tremendous effort coming off the underside of the bar bouncing on the line and out and Gorham reacting very well indeed to the rebound Alain Suta looking for his third international goal there it's his 25th international and ironically enough coming just after the best chance of the match perhaps falling to Ali McCoist not tremendous shooting power the Swiss blessed with a number of very fine left-footed players one of them Alain Suter there it is there check on this coming down clearly not over the line the Swiss thought it should have been given as a goal but that surely settled any arguments well, Suter buoyed by that effort wants possession again there's Boyd there's running power there tackle came from McCoy Herman rides it brilliantly Holds off McCall. That was fine play there by Heinz Herman once again. Ball put in by Hodiger. Nicol gets up well and he was pushed from the rear by Turkilnaz. 
A fine defensive header by Steve Nichol, but under intense pressure as Turkil Nas came careering into his back. Well, a break there for Andy Gordon without question. That shot from Suter had him beaten, no doubt about that. Scotland saved by the crossbar. Well, the Scots expected a tour of time, and the Swiss have not disappointed them. Helped on there for Johnston, showing good early control. That's back for Strachan. Jury taken right out of the play late. The referee allows the advantage rule. There's not much of that. But Alan Suter very lucky indeed that that wasn't held up. There's Turkey on us. Plenty of time for McKimmy. Well, a very nasty tackle there on Strachan after he released the pass to Jury. Lanese saw it all right, but thought Scotland had a break on. There's Herman again. No wonder the Scots are concerned about the space Herman's been getting. That's good play by McPherson. And by Johnston. Here's Jury. Nickel popping up on the outside for the first time in the match, making that forward run. Suit up to Orrell. The ball is out of play, though. Well, that's very fortunate for the Scots because Nickel was out of position there, having followed Jury forward. There's McPherson. And the Swiss pushing out the line to leave the Scottish players offside. They didn't get caught offside, they kept coming back with the Swiss defenders. And Craig Brown and his feet, and the Oxford are returning to his seat. Tension clear all around. There's McKimmy's header. Malpass trying to find a way past Heldman. Boyd made it all right. This is Herr. And now Orrell. Alan Sutter. Forza. Well, that was intended for Christoph Orrell, who'd made progress on the left flank, but Nicol realized there was no danger. Well, it's been a very tough time for the Scots in the first half. Andy Roxburgh are clearly concerned about the way the game has been running. Scotland haven't been able to take a grip on midfield. That'll be the main area of concern, I reckon. Sutter and Jury both misjudged the high ball. It came off Johnston for the throw. Still demonstrated by Suter and Herman, so troublesome to the Scots so far. Here's Chaffrey's at. And McKimmy doing a good job, tidying up behind McPherson. The spin will keep that in play until it's turned away. Well, it was out before the header by Orel. So it's a Swiss throw. So long as he takes it from the right position. Turi Oladezi had a very tough match so far. Over on the far side is Hottiger. This is Sutter. Up goes McKimmy. There's McCall. And now Strachan. Jury's free on the right. So is Nickel. Strachan again commanding possession in the middle of the field. But beautifully tackled by Herman. Strachan wanted too much time in possession. Instructions coming from Andy Oxford to shoot McCall in the middle of the field. Really concerned about the space being given to the creative Swiss players in that area, Suter and Herman. There's Forza, looking for Hardiger over on the far side, running at Malpass. And Gordon came to meet him. Fine play by the Swiss. And nothing about that was surprising to the Scots. They've been well worn about Hardiger's runs on the right. Here's Steve Nicol. That's for McCoy. He's onside. Forza has lost him. He's a chance for Scotland. McCoy's trying to go past the keeper. Looking there for a penalty in vain. It was fine goalkeeping by Stefan Huber. And McCoy is clearly trying to take advantage of the new interpretation by the officials. Forcing Huber to go down at his feet. But the keeper played the ball first. And there was no question that that was fair all right. McCoy will be bitterly disappointed. Two superb chances on the break for Scotland. Here's Jeffries at. Great chance for Switzerland. And the Scots looking for an offside decision. They're not going to get. Jeffries at has put Switzerland ahead. The 20th, the 30th minute of the match. Jeffries at caught all on his own here. There's the ball play now, Chapuisat appeared to be offside. No, played on by McKimmy. That's 
why there was no flag up and Goran was left helpless magnificent pass played across there catching the Scottish defence out Chap was at on the wrong side there of Steve Nicholl played on side by McKimmy on his deadly left foot well, that was superb finishing by the Borussia Dortmund player Goran was hopelessly exposed there certainly no question of there being an offside there's Malpass going forward this is Boyd McCoy's getting up breaks for Strachan and a fine effort there from Strachan on the half volley well the Scots being stung into some retaliation well there's the score on the half hour mark Switzerland leading by a goal to nil and on the balance of play they cannot begrudge that lead although the irony was that it came after the best chance of the match had fallen to Ali McCoist the tension now on the Scottish bench well the Swiss have come out with all guns blazing Nickel has to be quick that was a good tackle judged that to perfection to stop Chuck Rizat well shoot McKimmy just caught there back in a kind of sweeper position that's what played Chuck Rizat onside and McCoy is challenged fiercely by Forza Tom Boyd can't reach that pass from Malpass the critical phase in the match now Stilica has that crucial lead but the Scots have major problems Bedlam you hear coming from the Swiss supporters the Scottish fans for the moment muted 3,000 of them inside the stadium back it goes from Hodegaard to Herr now Forza what a space to allow the youngster to come forward Chap is at well, the Swiss now have a lead, so it changes the philosophy just a little. Herman may try to ensure they keep trying to go forward. Trying to play that into the gap for Hottiger. Cut off by Boyd. Or by Malpass, rather. Well, this little period up to half-time is going to be extremely important now. Scotland cannot afford to lose another goal in that period same time if they could get forward again Carboy one of those chances get back in terms it could transform the match so far it's the Swiss in command they've taken the game by the scruff of the neck from the start the Scots have found it extremely difficult to turn the tide here's Hermann he'll take no chances being hounded there by Strachan interesting tactical maneuver by the Scots playing Strachan in the same area as Hermann hoping that the Swiss captain had to do some defending against Strachan that hasn't really materialized yet though as Forza wanted a long ball forward that's an offside flag against Turkilmaz and Turkilmaz being spoken to for a little gesture of dissent by Rafi Lanesi who will know him well from their time in Italy There's Nickel for Scotland. The jury. Back again with Nickel. Bit casual there with the pass. McPherson has to be quick. Chapwee's at chasing him. Good play by McPherson. The pace of Chapwee's at all with a worry though. Turkham has also very quick up front for the Swiss. Jury beaten by Forza. Suter couldn't keep that in play. So we go to Scotland. Checking the watch there on the Scottish bench. I have the feeling that Andy Roxburgh might well be content to go in at half time in 10 minutes time. Only one down to give him the chance to reorganize. Sort things out tactically. Here's Johnston. Screening the ball brilliantly from Forza. Found Jury. 
Ball's angle across, the chance was on, and Boyd couldn't reach the ball. He trampled through his marker to try to get to that. Well, there are clear signs here that the Swiss defence is none too clever when put under pressure. Gordon Jury sweeping that across. And Boyd with the player trying to convert it for Scotland. This is Hottiger. The cover provided there by Tom Boyd for Scotland. This track in coming deep. Trying to do the Heinz Hermann roll for Scotland. Well, that's not what he wants to do with that, but he got it back from Hermann. Here's McKinney. Headed into the white position, forces Tom Boyd to sprint back. He read that well, that back killer from Heldman. And there's no way in which Boyd will get away with that in international football. Going for the ball very strongly with his studs showing. There's no Italian referee who will allow that. Here's Herman. Looking at Chef at. Oh, McCall. That's for Strachan. McCall tried to find Johnston with an early pass. And the Scots caught there in midfield with both McCall and Strachan pushing forward. McCall's hounding there and made sure the ball went backwards. And he got him coming out to command the penalty box there. Reacting to Steve Nichols' call for possession. Here's Jury. Now Johnston. Has control let him down there for a second. There's McCoy being held from the rear by Hare. Clear bit of jersey pulling by Dominique Hare. And this time the referee gives the decision Scotland's way. Played short there by McCall to Strachan. Yeah. And a handball decision again, Scott and Strachan. Well, I think the referee there was perfectly correct because McCall did nudge the ball short to Strachan. Returned the ball to play. Well, a wasted free kick, but that won't cause any problems. Turki Ilmaz is oh, fully 15 yards offside. But a little bit of a lapse in concentration there by Gordon Strachan. There's Nicol, looking for Johnston, firmly challenged by Forza, there's Orel, now Turkilmaz being allowed to turn, this could be dangerous for Scotland, Nicol getting back, there's Turkilmaz, and it's turned away by Nicol, an excellent block by Gorham, but the defence opened up there for Turkilmaz, another moment of genuine concern for Scotland, the way Turkilmaz got through there for the shot at goal, Gorham getting his body behind the ball, getting help then from Nicol. More problems for Scotland in defence. Chef at with the corner. A lot of runs being made inside the area. Herman scores! Heinz Herman unchallenged. It's a sickening blow to the Scots. The 39th minute of the match. Heinz Herman, number eight there, loses his marker, gets it in front of Dave McPherson, and there's no chance again for Andy Gorham. Well, look at this again. Nightmares here of the Scottish defence as Herman gets in ahead of McPherson, and it's 2-0 to Switzerland. Well, there's Herman getting up so well. McPherson out of reach, and Herman gets his 13th international goal. So 2-0 to Switzerland, and that goal has been threatened every time the Swiss have come forward. But losing such a goal from a set piece will infuriate Andy Rosper on the Scottish bench. And it now is a long... 2-0 down, away from home, a partisan crowd in full voice. There goes Judy, well beaten by Orel. McCall is still there, snatched at the ball back inside. Showing a little sign.
anxiety. The referee will hold play up to allow treatment for Morris Johnston. Five minutes of the first half left. 2 0 to Switzerland. And really on the balance of play, you have to say the Swiss are worthy of that lead. Only at Oxford will be reflecting ruefully on the two misses by Ali McCoist when he was clean through in the keeper. But nevertheless, on the balance of play, it's been Switzerland in command. Delightful play in the middle of the field from Hermann and from Suter. There was the good defensive header by Orel, stopping Jury. The kind of challenge that Scotland were looking for when Hermann scored the second. An awkward landing there for Morris Johnston. Hugh Allen, the trainer, giving some treatment. But he's clearly in trouble, Johnston. And the Scots substitutes are all warming up. I will see this ball played and look how well Orel, the number three, does. Challenging Jury, who's very powerful coming in like that. And Johnston caught in the middle of all that. That's what's done the damage. Well, the Scottish doctor, Stuart Hillis, is on. So too is physiotherapist Eric Ferguson. And this will be a severe blow to Scotland if Morris Johnston has to go off. And there is already activity on the Scottish bench. They're clearly very worried now about Johnston, who's in severe pain. There's no way he's going to be able to carry on. That's quite clear. The referee now looking for a stretcher to have Johnston removed. Eric Ferguson explaining. So let's check again. The damage done to Johnston who was caught in the middle of all this. Jury, in fact, did the major damage, I think, as he tried to get to the end of that cross. His knee catching Johnston in the area of the hip and the kidneys. That's why he has to be lifted to the stretcher. And Gary McAllister is preparing to come on. So there's Gary McAllister, number 14. It will mean Jury going to a striking role alongside McCoist. McAllister in midfield. Strachan may come wide on the right this time. So allow McAllister to play in the middle. Well, this just clinches what has been a first half nightmare for Scotland. Morris Johnston on his international comeback. Forced to leave the field after 42 and a half minutes. Well, what a very sad sight that is. So McAllister has gone on and as anticipated, Strachan has switched to a wide position on the right. Jury is through the middle with McCoyst and McAllister has joined McCall in the middle of the Scottish four-man midfield. The Scots now have a free kick and a chance to salvage something before half-time. Headed away by Forza. Met by McKimmy. He's given that straight away there to the Swiss. Uh, the offside flag is up against Chapuisat. Well, a careless header there by McKimmy. Lucky not to be punished. So McPherson plates it forward. Easily won in defence by Orel. And McPherson will play this all the way back to Andy Gorham. There's Malpass. Couldn't get that beyond here. McAllister made a very good run. There's Boyd also. Boyd's the player penalised for Scotland. So what a match for McAllister to become involved in. Coming on now to win his ninth cap. Stilica, a very happy man, I've no doubt. Scarcely have dreamed of a two-goal lead at half-time. It looks as though that's what he's going to have. We've got seconds left but we had a long injury stoppage so there may be a couple of minutes left for play in the first half that's what he got oh it's good running again Turkil Maz racing inside he now wants to pass again from Herman this is Sutar he may try one from long range 
encouraged by that earlier effort off the underside of the crossbar. A lot of hard thinking going on there between the Scottish management pair. It certainly has been Switzerland's half without any question. It's been an outstanding performance indeed from Switzerland in this opening 45 minutes. And they've overrun the Scots in the middle of the field. And with their sharp front players, they've got the reward. A foul by Forza on Jury. Free kick taken quickly by track into McAllister his Leeds United teammate here's McCall Nicole will have to recover quickly and he did so he appeared to be held by Turkilmaz and Orell allowed to come forward tackled by McPherson a free kick has been given to Scotland well Steve Diggle thinks it should be a throw but the free kick was clearly given Here's Strachan. Forced to go deep again. Jury beaten by Forza. This is Suta. And McCall. And Strachan. Jury is clearly offside. Trying to adjust now to his new role through the middle alongside Ali McCoyst. Well, is still looking very concerned. You'll know the game's not over by any means. Herman playing it for Turkilmaz is onside, he's in behind Nickel. This is dangerous for Scotland. And Malpass there with a superb clearing header. In ahead of Knup. Fine positioning defensively. There's Hudiger. Well, Turkilmaz has caught all his own well offside. Had that caused any problem? So applause from the Swiss supporters again. The Swiss have played with invention, with pace, with total determination. And they've earned the reward of a two-goal lead in the first half. Raphael Lanesi looking at his watch. With more than two minutes of injury time, Julius found space in behind the defence, taking on Forza. Checking inside. Back it comes to McAllister. And another Scottish chance goes to begging. Strachan has kept the ball in play. Well, that was great play by Gordon Jury. And the referee has blown for half-time. It couldn't be heard. No, he hasn't. The ball turned out there by McCall. Well, I reckon if you'd offered Andy Roxburgh three chances of that quality in the first half in an away international, he would have been overjoyed. As it is, none have been converted. And Scotland are trailing by two goals to nil. Well, sadly, that chance falling to Gary McAllister, who really, in fairness, a scarcely had time to warm up to the task coming into this frantic arena that's Horiger Swiss playing it back there and what a difference that might have made had McAllister knocked that into the net such a clean strike to the ball to normally Gary McAllister scored a winner against Switzerland last season a fine right footed finish McCall down towards McAllister that's McCall again had to play the ball inside, he had no option wide. And this time, the referee Giulio Lanesi brings an incredible first half to an end. A first half dominated on the play by the Swiss, who really are good value to lead two goals to nil. The first coming from Chapuisat just on the half hour. And then the header from the corner kick by Heinz Hermann. But Scotland will reflect on two great chances which fell to Ali McCoy clean through the goalkeeper one in the inside left channel one in the inside right and then that chance which Gary McAllister failed to convert just on half time Morris Johnston has been carried off and it will take a second half of really heroic proportions to turn this match around although there have been clear chances to the Scots and if they get any more of these it may be a different story and one goal you feel for Scotland could change the pattern of play considerably so let's see about that the news incidentally from the dressing room is that Morris Johnston took a kick in the small of the back and there's still an assessment going on of the damage but he's in a lot of pain now that actually was inflicted by Gordon Jury so the Swiss start the second half and the opening 15 minutes will be absolutely vital the Swiss of course have a little bit of a tactical dilemma should they bed in and ensure they make no mistakes or should they go for the killer third goal 
that's the decision that Uli Stilica will have taken the Scots too they have to guard against Billy Bidil said charging forward and taking chances at the back they have to play in a composed fashion and they certainly have to stop Heinz Hermann getting too much possession he didn't use that effectively in that Turkil Maz was clearly offside so looking around the Scottish formation no change in the shape of the side for the second half as Jury challenges there the McCoy is also in amongst all that and there's McKinney now there has been a change in the formation no nope. looking closely it appears as though McKinney has gone to right back and Nickel has joined McPherson in central defense so an orthodox back four but that's the major change McKinney in his more familiar role in the Scottish jersey the ball is sliced out there by Stefan Huber so it's McKinney, Nickel, McPherson and Malpass across the back Strachan, McAllister, McCall and Boyd across the midfield and Jury and McCoy up front Jury has taken a knock as that ball is swept across there by Tom Boyd retrieved by McCoy and you can be certain he'll be determined to make amends for those missed chances there's a chance for Jury and Scotland has scored we're one and a half minutes into the second half and there's joy and lost for the top of army behind that you go with his third international goal leaving Cuba helpless the cross here of real quality Jury coming to meet it and a Tottenham Hotspur striker drills the ball beyond Cuba oh what a fine ball this was from Stuart McKimmy with a very difficult first half this will make him feel better the header by Jury a precise downward one impossible for a goalkeeper and Scotland now have been thrown a lifeline well, it really is the perfect start to the second half, and this will be a major test of the Swiss. They'll be looking now to Heinz Hermann to calm them down and control them. But the Scots now have found a way to go, and we have a tremendous second half to come now. McKinney stumbling, Strachan picks it up. Looking there for McAllister. The Swiss, though, trying to get back to their passing pattern. Oh, that's fine play again over on the far side. Orel playing it into a gap. There goes Suta. And it came off Nickel for a corner kick. Alain Suta took a knock there in the act of sending that across. Well, Andy Roxburgh and Craig Brown will be much happier now. You can see the prospect of a recovery now. Suta is off the field, so the referee will not allow any stoppage here. The Swiss will require to continue with 10 men. Suta player who's likely to take that corner kick switch back there to Trukil Mans here's Huttiger he may test Gorham from long range and that's a great block by Gorham still a problem and it's scrambled away from the line there by Nickel and by McPherson well the Scots living dangerously the whistle is gone for a free kick inside the penalty area though Andy Gorham getting some encouragement from Gordon Strachan there was the save made by Andy Gorham. Now that was outstanding. But then he had more work to do as this ball was played across his bows. And Nichols did just enough to hit the help the ball to safety. Here's Strachan now. The Scots enjoying some possession. Now the offside trap has been sprung again. McKimmy breaking on the right. Well, can he get in another good cross? That's towards Strachan. It's back to McCall. That's for Boyd. The ball skidding off the wet surface though, away from Tom Boyd. Well, Scotland spent a great deal of time on Monday and Tuesday practicing ways to break down an offside trap. They've been very alert to that as the Swiss have been running out because the Swiss are renowned for doing that effectively. The ball has gone for a throw there off Marcel Heldman. Well, McCall leaves the throw to Malpass just the kind of steadying moment for the Scots they know they can play sensibly and still have a real chance of saving this there's McCall held up well by Heldman and the space now for Suter is back on the field looking perfectly sprightly and that's great covering play by Dave McPherson Chapuisat blocks the road to goal there's McKimmy had to be quick getting help now from Strachan the Scots playing with some renewed vigour 
Pepped up by the half-time team talk and then by the goal and Jury's been flagged offside and that was very close indeed. Gordon Jury clearly disagrees with the linesman. Jurio Lanesi, the referee, having a word with Jury. That's why he's apologising for the outburst of dissent. Well, could the Scots produce a miraculous rescue act in the second half? You just tuned in. You've missed an incredible match with the Swiss going in at half time, two goals to nil up. And Gordon Jury pulling one back in the second minute of the second half. So that reorganisation of the Scottish defence with McKimmy going to right back. He hasn't played there for Aberdeen for some time. But Steve Nicholl has certainly played in central defence many times for Liverpool. So it'll be no strange position for him. McKimmy's played that forward. Jury's beaten the offside trap. The keeper is committed. Very good goalkeeping that by Stefan Huber, 25-year-old Lausanne sports keeper. The referee's given a free kick against Jury, but his attention's on the goalkeeper. That means play has to return to the Swiss penalty box. Andy Roxborough has scarcely sat down throughout the match. So much at stake. All the singing you hear from the Scottish supporters now behind Andy Gorham. They're in splendid voice. Well, the crowd now has been officially confirmed at 48,000, which appears to be some 3,200 more than the safety limit. The field in the corners, though, that would make the difference. The header by Forza. There's Hermann. That's good play again from Switzerland. Here's Suter. Well, asking a lot there of Turkilmaz with that pass. Andy Gorham wanted to keep the ball in play to keep the momentum. Going forward for Scotland. Good leap by Jury and by Herman. Jury going to the right, he's on side and he's brought down very heavily there by Orel. Well, Gordon Jury's taken a new lease of life since he moved back into the striking position, causing lots of problems. And offside given against Jury. Well, Jury looks towards the linesman. The flag up very quickly indeed. And the question again of perhaps being in line, but well, that would leave him on side, so the linesman clearly didn't think that. Here's Christoph Orel. Another Lausanne sports player, along with Dominic, Dominic Herr and Stefan Huber, the keeper. Mark Hottiger also, they all play for Lausanne Sports. Good person leaning in there, there's McCall, that's a good pass. Strachan trying the long ball towards McCoist. It's on the way by Knup for Scotland throw. Well, the Swiss fans wanted that to go Switzerland's way, but that wouldn't have been appropriate in view of what happened just mal pass again now McCoy that's a good turn away from Hodiger spinning the ball well trying to link with McAllister this is Herman the ball was carried out of play Uli Stilica out of his dugout there protesting bitterly to the linesman that's what's forced Tulio Lanesi across to the technical area below is there Stilica in trouble as he was at Hamden Park a year ago and he was banned from the dugout well getting very excited about a throw in here's McCall a typical battling performance by McCall powering his way forward again across it goes this time to McCoy touched away by Orel and almost an opening once again for Ali McCoy well, he'll be thinking clearly he should have added to his eight international goal so far. Jury taken right out of the play by Dominique Herr. Now he could be in trouble for that. Jury trying to beat the offside trap. Uh, the yellow card is shown to the Swiss defender. 
but there are signs that that goal and the Scottish second half performance has rattled the Swiss side so McPherson has gone forward he's the target swept away by Kinnell now pass needs some help he gets it from Nicol good piece of defending there by Steve Nicol Now pass. Looking for Fury. Well won by Hare. Kinnock goes down. McCall is penalised. McCall complaining bitterly that he was elbowed in the first place by Kinnock. There's Hottiger. Kept in play by Malpass, but thankfully for Scotland, Marcel Heldman played it out for the throw. Ball helps it on, there's Jury. So powerful on the turn. Hottiger is there. Boyd tries to get him on the turn. The throw goes to Scotland. Jury takes it quickly. The Swiss crowd unhappy with the referee now. And McCall wanted too long on the ball. Held man's in the clear on the right. Across comes McPherson. The Scots are clearly exposed now. Here's Knup. And that's well taken by Gorham. Well, a very nasty moment that for Scotland. Could so easily have suffered for that. And Gorham launching the long ball downfield. Rodriguez header. Returned quickly by Craig Brown coming off the bench. Scots want to keep the play flowing towards the Swiss goal. Well pass, but he gets up well. Check with that. He's found Herman. That's for Turkilmaz. The Swiss have players in the box now. Turkilmaz trying to go outside his man and he earned the corner kick. Refreshment there for the Scotland coach. Well, he'll age in this match, there's no doubt about that even if the Scots could get back on terms the Suter with the corner the Scots marking will require even more diligent than it was for the second Swiss goal the Suter again down the way by McKimmy here's Herman Back with Forza. Suter confident enough to try to hold off his man. McCall putting pressure on in midfield. Orel reacted well to it though. Yeah, playing it forward. Tokyo Maz is offside. And every decision of that time greeted with howls of anguish from the Swiss and from Uli Stilica. Well, the Scots have produced some good performances in foreign soil recently. They're being asked to produce perhaps the best of all here. That was played by Jury for McCoist. McCoist couldn't control it. Well, Strachan trying to beat Suter in the air. That's asking rather a lot. Space in the middle here, which McCall is trying to close down. There's Kinnock running straight into Boyd. Now McCall. Good play from the Rangers midfield player. There's no offside here, Jury's in the clear. Good play again by Jury. McCoy waits in the box. So is McCall. There's a good piece of defending by Hudiger. Tom Boyd wants to throw a play to the left. But there's going to be a substitution made by Switzerland. They're going to withdraw. They're withdrawing Alain Suter who took an injury earlier on uh, bringing on a tough man in midfield this is Thomas Pickel of Grasshopper Zurich well Suter is the creative man Pickel is the hard man in midfield so Uri Stilica looking to shore up the middle of the field quarter hour gone in the second half here's 
Malpass firing over the cross McCoy is content to let that go and then retrieve it if he can well again the wet surface was the problem Morel's throw well the decision there goes against Gordon Strachan one hour gone 2-1 to Switzerland but things looking much rosier than they did at half time but the Swiss led by two goals to nil Gordon Jury having a distinction of being one of the second Scotsman to score in the stadium in an international match other was Leslie Johnston of Clyde in 1948 a 2-1 defeat though on that occasion so that's maybe ominous McCoy is keeping the ball in play the ball's gone over the corner kick's been given good hustling play there by Strachan out in the corner against Christophe Orel. Hope again for Andy Roxburgh. The referee calming down Orel, who reacted angrily to that decision. Oh, can the Scots make this set piece count? Strachan playing it in. First touch there for Piquel. Boyd playing it into space for McAllister. Change of pace, trying to get some leverage away from his marker, Hodiger. Well, McAllister taking some time to pick up the pace of the match. So difficult for a substitute. McCoy's fighting hard. There's Boyd. McKinney wanted that badly enough to get it. And it's back from Boyd. Jury again showing his prowess in the air but been penalised for using an elbow on Fairley trying to get away from the defender this was in possession with Hodiger turn the ball out though well the fluency which was so evident in the Swiss play in the first half hasn't been recaptured in the second period and that's what's given the Scots some hope Scott's take some credit for that, of course, by their extra effort in that area. Here's McCoy. He was the last player to touch that. It'll be a goal kick, I reckon. Jury asks for a handball decision against Forza. But more in hope than expectation. Challenged by McCall, the ball spins on to Turkilmaz. There's McAllister. Alphaz couldn't reach it. Boyd has to get back. Good play by Boyd. One of the reasons in the side is the match runs from midfield on the flank by the Swiss. They're very adept at that. It's won by Dominic Kerr above McCoy. In goes McCall. Asks in vain for the throw. McAllister will be very anxious too to make amends for that golden opportunity missed just before half time so about a minute after he'd come on, he'd come on a substitute there's the return pass from Strack into McKimmy he's eased out of that by Bickel but the referee allows play to continue the Scots are exposed now with McKimmy well upfield the chap who's at control lets him down for one of the very rare occasions in the match and McKimmy has not recovered totally the referee is not prepared to allow attention, or is he? Yes, he is now. On goes Hugh Allen. The substitutes again emerge from the Scotland bench. And the one being called upon at the moment is Mother McLeod, who would be the obvious man to come on should McKimmy requires to go off. It may mean Malpass the right back and uh, to left back if McKimmy can't come on so Gordon Strachan now 
urging on his players, talking to them all over the field. This is Beat Suter, the brother of Alan Suter, who's gone off, who is preparing to come on. Another man who provide a bit of dig in midfield for the Swiss. It would be very interesting to see who comes off. Remember the Scots still have in reserve. Ronald McLeod, Ryan McClare and John Robertson. As well as goalkeeper Brian Gunn. Well, McKimmy is on his feet but not looking too well. Marcel Heldman, the player being withdrawn it would appear. But not yet. The match will restart with a throw to Scotland. Striking will have to hurry. And the referee may take umbrage. Well, the diagonal running of the Scots, not too sharp on that occasion. About to turn past that from McAllister. McCall did well. Well, he's been penalised. Well, they went to the danger point and made a tough challenge. The referee judges it unfair and gives the free kick to Switzerland. Now the change can be made on the bench. Marcel Heldman from FC Bettingham goes off. Well, he's still a looking more ruffled now. Heldman goes off. Beat Suter goes on. An experienced man winning his 51st cap. A 28-year-old who plays for Neuchâtel Zamax. The Swiss have played both their substitute cards. Scott still have one other possible change to make. They're looking carefully at Stuart McKimmy. International football, not the place for a casualty. The chap we at trying to get away from Steve Nichol. So we're just past the midway point now in the second half. 22 and a half minutes remaining. And that's the time Scotland have to earn an equaliser, which must be the principal initial target. Here's McCoist. Well, he didn't control that the way he wanted to. In a bit of a hurry, showing a touch of anxiety that he's not renowned for. The ball is swelled out of play from Malpass. Scotland preparing to make their second substitution. The player stripping off is Brian McClare. There's Suter, well tackled by McCall. McCoy and Herman trying to judge the bounce. Swiss get the better of that. Malpass backtracks. It is 43rd International. Gorham in his 16th. Well, Switzerland only this third side to score twice against Andy Gorham in the international match. After Italy and Brazil. Well, McKinney still looking less than secure in his movement. Ryan McClare waits to become involved. And it's going to be McKimmy who's withdrawn. Well, that would suggest, I reckon, that the Scots are going to go for broke. Resisting the temptation to play Modern McLeod at left back. They're going to pull back Tom Boyd. Push Forrest Malpass to right back. And allow Brian McClare to play a foraging role from the middle of the field. And McClare comes on to win his 18th cap. And what an occasion this would be to score his first international goal. So he's replacing... Tom Boyd on the wide side of the Scottish midfield. So two changes forced on the Scots. Morris Johnson's injury in the first half, bringing on Gary McAllister. Stuart McKimmy's bringing on Brian McClare. This is Jury. The ball has been carried out of play. It'll be a throw to Scotland, and Gordon Jury is capable of taking a very long one. McPherson has gone to the six-yard box in recognition of Jury's throwing prowess. McPherson being pumped and bundled inside the area there. There's Malpass showing strength in possession. And uh, McPherson is offside. The free kick to Switzerland. 
The referee having a war with a couple of Swiss players, Forza and Orel. Here's Hottiger. Now Suter. Challenged by Boyd. But Boyd in his Chelsea position at left back. This is his first international, the Chelsea player. This is Bichel. Another left footed player trying to find Turkil Maz and he almost got a touch. That would surely have settled it for Switzerland. But there goes Jury, he's in behind Forza. Forza trying to recover. That's a good tackle by the youngster. Well, he's remained very calm indeed in his first serious competitive international. Only one friendly before today. Here's Malpass winning the ball from a call. Here's Boyd, being hustled all the way by Turkil Maz. That's good play by Turkil Maz, pressuring the ball, forcing Boyd to turn back. The Swiss supporters now trying to build up some noise and some encouragement. Coyce lay off, he was caught there by Forza. Well the referee's given the free kick alright, but it was a bad tackle on McCoyce. The yellow card has been shown for much less than that. So here's Gordon striking over the ball. Once Chap Wizat gets out of the way. Good person is up. That's for McCoy. Pressurizing Herman. What if he's given a foul against McCoy? Well, he didn't appear to be doing much more than trying to get the ball. So Andy Robster up breathing deeply down there. As are all the players, it's a very warm, balmy evening. Stamina sapping. A real test of character for the Scots. Here's McAllister. Now McLear. Well tackled by Hottiger. So left there to Boyd. Here's McLear. Tackled well by Herman. There's Turkil Maz. Caught by McCall. Well, we're whistling around the stadium, suggesting that Sean McCall was worthy of a booking. Turkil Maz making a great deal of that. The referee will not allow attention. Telling uh, the Bologna striker to get back at his feet. Well, Turkil Maz will have adequate Italian to understand Tullio Lanesi. He's been in Bologna for the best part of a year. So here's Herman. And Turkil Maz, who was injured a second ago, has recovered well enough. Jury doing well. Here's McLear. Nowhere to go, going into that ruck of Swiss players. Herman trying to restore order in midfield. Here's Hottiger. Now Suter. Bikel. That's good play by Bikel. Space over on the far side for the Swiss to exploit. It's Canuck. And it came off Nickel for the corner kick. And they go to asking the linesman about an offside flag. But there didn't appear to be any case for that, to be fair to the linesman. So it's every hand to the pump now for the Scots defensively. Hair getting up well. Turned away there by Dominique Hare who got up so well for that. Hare was the player being marked by McPherson for the Swiss second goal when Heinz Herman came across his bows, losing his marker. person in the face of it, worthy of some criticism, but perhaps on reflection, he did a good marking job on Dominic Herr, but whoever was marking Herman was questionable. This is Chap Wiesat. 15 minutes remaining, chances on again here for Switzerland, Turkil Maz, trying to set himself for a shot, now waits for support, he gets it from Herman. An offside flag was up against Adrian Knup in any event. Well, had Turkil Maz been able to take that on the run, 
I reckon the match will be over for Scotland. Forced to check back. Nicola McPherson did well, not diving in. Jury going up with Hare, who won that cleanly. It's a throw, though, to Scotland. This time Boyd will take it. Or will Jury come across? Teammates for a very brief spell at Chelsea, Jury and Boy, until Jury's move to Spurs for £2 million. Pounds. That slipped out of his hands. The call finds Jury. McCall again. That was for McAllister. McCall at full stretch. Swiss content to dump the ball to safety. Well, the Scots now trying to summon up one last major effort in the closing stages to save the tie. Well, you can see the pressure on Stilica. Sweat-stained forehead. There's McClure. Space for Strachan. Not a bad effort from Strachan. Allowing the ball to skid off the surface and force Cuba into the save. Goalkeeper holding it well. Strachan might have been hoping for a rebound also. McPherson. Bolt as he went for that. But the free kick goes against the Scotland centre half. There was a save by Cuba. Lister Kilmaz. Challenged by McClare. Mikel, Mike Killer finds Sutar. The Scottish defence complaining again bitterly about the lack of an offside flag on this near side. Well, time becoming the enemy for Scotland. He just tuned in, Switzerland 2, Scotland 1. Scotland attempting a fight back from a two goal deficit. A lot of space here for Beat Suta. The player have been sucked forward. Here's Turkil Maz. Well, Turkil Maz going down. Long after an attempt by Boyd was made. The referee has given the free kick nevertheless. And Turkil Maz appeared there for my money to calm the referee because there was no contact made. And Turkil Maz after he was away from the defender. There went to that dramatic ball. Gordon Strachan certainly takes that view. He's complaining bitterly. And if Turkil Maz is hurt at all, which I think will be doubtful, it was a stumble on the ball, not anything Boyd did. I will tell in a moment how much effect that's had on Turkil Maz. The Scottish players clearly indicating to him that they think he has cheated the referee. A free kick for Beat Suta. Another vital moment in an enthralling match. This time the Scottish defence stood up to that well. Still a throw to Switzerland. The Swiss supporters now sensing the kill perhaps. The person couldn't get to that, nor could Beat Suta. Clearance was made by Steve Nicholl. There's McClear. Determined play by McClear. Looking for help inside. McCoy's comes across to challenge Forza and an offside decision surely here, yes. Came rather belatedly in fairness. Is this tracking? Some inspiration sought from the Leeds United Maestro once again. Ortega getting up well. There's Beat Suta. Now uh, McPherson, Strachan helping it on, gets it back, makes space for himself brilliantly, now driving at the Swiss defence, and taken from the rear by Chafuizat, Strachan very angry about that, very angry exchange there, a yellow card for Chafuizat, and... Gary McAllister anxious to get the ball back to take this free kick. 
But Cruyff's also in the thick of this. Tempo's rising rapidly. Well, is this too far out for a direct shot? I wonder. Gordon Jury can hit this with lots of power. So too could Gary McAllister. Strachan is orchestrating. Jeff Jury playing it in, the wall stood up well. Scott are having to get back to stay onside. They've done that very effectively. They're onside while the referee reacting now to the linesman. Now the linesman, in my view, taking no chances at all with offsides. Anything doubtful they're giving. Because that for me was doubtful. That running into McPherson, making no attempt even to look at the ball. Gordon's long clearance. It's helped on there by Bikel for Borghois. The support waiting in the middle. Well, Ali McCoy's will know that that cross should have beaten the first defender. And that's no doubt what Andy Roxburgh thinks. The worst Scots getting in there in numbers. They have a corner kick though. Taken by Strachan. This is Malpass. Sending the ball wide. It's a great pass that. Here's Strachan. Shipping it across. Too close to the keeper. An apology offered there by Strachan. That was a good opportunity. Nickel turned it away from Turkey Maz. Who I may say is running completely freely. You remember he was dying a moment ago. La Suisse says the, ch the chant from the supporters, Switzerland, getting a lot of vocal support as they look for a third goal, but here's Scotland in the break, here's McLear, taking the ball wide, showing too much of that to Orrell, and Scotland are exposed again, the interception made by Strack and he has to go again, back it goes from Nicol. So seven minutes remaining. Jury going up early. Some miscue there. McCoy's nods it down to Jury. There's McCoy. Scotland have equalised. And Ali McCoy has made complete amends. The joy from the Tartan army. The Scottish bench erupted below as being waved back by the linesman. Well, what a fight back this has been. The striking pair, Jury and McCoy's combining. Look at this shot from Jury. The keeper couldn't hold it. McCoy's was on it in a flash. And this time, the ball was in the net. Well, McCoy's nodding it down. Jury rifling in the shot. And look at the reaction this time from McCoy's. And what a relief that'll be for the Rangers striker. So the reactions on McCoy, some question marks about his match practice, but how he relished that. Now it's a question of how the match may turn in the remaining six minutes, plus injury time. The Swiss coming forward, here's Bikel. A collision there, head to head with Malpass. Free kick's been given, every Scotsman coming back now. Well, if you'd said to Andy Roxborough, will you accept the draw even before the match? I think he might have said yes. But at half-time, he'd have grabbed it with two hands. But there's still some hard defensive work to do. Concentration must remain intense. The referee wants the wall back a yard or two. The Swiss may be paying for their alteration in policy in the second half here's Bikel Knup couldn't get to that it was Nicol who just touched it away five minutes left two each here in the Vankdorf Stadium in Bern Scott slow to get out for that headed away by McAllister this time McLear also is up 
And the clearance in the end by McAllister, but the official had gone for a handball decision against Adrian Knopp. And Uli Stilichap is a bitterly disappointed man. Well, what incredible drama here in Bern. It looked so bad for the Scots at half-time. But they've reorganised, they've battled, and they've come back with a couple of goals from the strikers. One from Zuri, one from McCoist. And now could they even have the audacity to think about a winner? Free kick given up, that challenging air by McCoist. The Swiss now the task of picking up the pace to try to win the match again. There's Tom Boyd finding McClare. Cut off there by Huddiger. In goes McAllister strongly. Ball in the air, the referee weighs play on as McCall keeps challenging. This time he's penalised and he's going to be booked. Well, that will be deemed for persistent infringement of the rules. Well, Andy Roxburgh still gesticulating to his players who are paying no attention, I can tell you, at this stage. But far too concerned with their own thoughts as Herman finds space on the left looking to deliver a good cross they getting up well there there's Knup that came off Nickel a corner kick Knup a major threat inside the area Scots having to defend again as Chuck Wizat sends over the corner it's a very good one indeed well won by McAllister what a gut lofting it back in there's no offside well, there's no offside given there, and once again the Scots looking at the linesman. The are going over the bar though, so there's no lasting damage from this. But there certainly appeared to be a possibility of offside. Jury getting a vital touch on again. Forza has time to turn this back to Hubert. Herman calls for the ball. Orel plays it back, McAllister pressuring the ball and forcing Herman into the fast back. Now the Scots regroup to defend. Here's Gordon, Mc Gordon striking with a header. Now McCoist. Well, the head was dipped as McCoist tried to play the ball as it was bouncing. McCoist offers the apology. Two minutes remaining. Switzerland 2, Scotland 2. And remember, it was 2-0 to Switzerland at half-time. A nasty one there for Christoph Orel. Here's Herman being faced by McCall, who's got much closer to him in the second half. Here's Bikel with a good chance to set something up for the Swiss. Across it comes to Beat Suter. This is Hodiger. Posting the ball inside. Beat Suter is waved on side. He clearly appeared to be off. Handball as the ball was forced over the line. The decision has been given. It's not a goal. It's a handball decision on the goal line. Well, the referee hesitated all right, but that was an anxious moment. The answer to look to the offside as this ball came across. It was bundled towards Gorham. There was the handball. The referee perfectly correct. Oh, what a relief there. The linesman also appeared to have a part to play in that decision. So we're into the final minute plus stoppage time as the ball's headed forward here from McAllister. The Scots coming forward, perhaps the last attack played in there and turned away. An acrobatic clearance by Orel. This is McCall sending it across towards Jury and that's just too high. The Scots getting a bit carried away though, sending men forward. Andy Roxburgh and Craig Brown waving them back now towards the defensive position. They must guard against any folly in the late stages. Referee checking his watch as McPherson appeared to be bundled there by Knup and the free kick's been given. Free kick to Scotland. Well, can the Scots hang on? It would be one of their finest performances in 45 minutes. And we witnessed for a very long time from men in Scotland colours. McPherson invited to play that back. Of Ray Boyd to play it back to Gorham. We're now into time added on for stoppages. 
There's no offside if Judy gets up well. Helps it on, and it'll be a goal kick to Switzerland. Stefan Huber goes to collect the ball. So we're into injury time now. Referee Lanesi checking with his watch, checking with his linesman. It doesn't appear to be fouled again. There's Boyd sweeping it forward. Jury is offside. There's no argument about that decision. So a last effort perhaps from Switzerland. Here's Forza with a free kick. Pumping the ball forward. Been allowed to bounce there. And Steve Nichol brings it clear. A chance on in the break. Strachan's been picked out. He leaves it to McCoist. Good Scotland snatch, a dramatic winner. What an incredible match it has been. Strachan being impeded there. The referee gives the decision against Strachan, though, for his attentions on his man. Here's McCall tackling. In comes McAllister. A free kick goes to Switzerland. McCall's been booked, remember. He'll have to be careful. We're in the second minute of stoppage time. McPherson will head this clear. Straight to Hattiger. On the right is Beat Suter. Again, makes the clearance. Jury back, hustling Hottiger. There's Forza. Surely an offside this time. Yes, the offside flag up belatedly. Indeed, the decision appeared to be given by the referee. And I have to say, the near side linesman, if he's been carefully scrutinised, may come in for some criticism by the appropriate refereeing observer. In fairness though, not so Tullio Lanesi, the Italian referee, who so far I think has handled the match superbly, as befitting his very high reputation in world football. Jury going up. In goes McCall. McCoy's trying to get behind the defender. Back from Forza. Schubert launching a long ball downfield. The referee checked his watch again. McPherson doing extremely well with these high balls now. He's got his timing right. There's Hodiger. Tackled by McCall. A chance now for Bikel. That was well blocked at the edge of the area by Steve Nichol. And the referee blows the final whistle. It's been an incredible fight back by Scotland. They're still in the Group 2 driving seat thanks to one of the best second-half fight backs that I've ever